For any family who is faced with a new diagnosis of diabetes, there is this um, description that I've heard before, life before that diagnosis and life after that diagnosis. When my family doctor called us, my mom and I were in panic. We were kind of like speechless. My mom was sobbing. And my doctor said, Hennessy has to go to BC Children's Hospital. She has to go to the emergency room. She has type 1 diabetes. When you first learn about the diabetes diagnosis, well, you don't even know what you have to do. That's the thing. Your life is just instantly turned topsy-turvy. One thing people don't realize or don't understand is that it's a disease where it can be very life-threatening very quickly. You need to constantly manage, learn, monitor, deal with it because it's nonstop and it's it's a daily grind from the day you have it because you know you realize you have all these things to take into account that you have to deal with. Everything all day, every day now must be managed and timed and counted and known and the innocence that children normally have and the fun and, and not having to have those cares has to end right now. The community of diabetes researchers are making huge strides in finding a cure for diabetes. In the meantime, however, there are 2,500 children living with diabetes in British Columbia and two to three children are diagnosed with diabetes every week at BC Children's Hospital. I think it's a really exciting time to be in diabetes research. The ultimate goal is to predict, treat, and prevent diabetes in kids in uh, British Columbia. If I compare kind of my experience when I was younger with diabetes to some of the families we're seeing now who are currently going through it, I know that the way I had learned about diabetes is a little bit different than what we're teaching now, just with innovations and research that's available now compared to 20 years ago. If you're diagnosed today with diabetes, the technologies available are fairly good. You can have continuous glucose monitoring coupled with an insulin pump. I'm really excited as I'm seeing research progress to see the field move towards uh, things like precision medicine. Diabetes doesn't look the same for everyone. It's kind of unique and it can't really be treated as an umbrella term or as an umbrella field where everyone's the same. And as we sort of learn more about how diabetes looks before and after diagnosis and even long-term, we can kind of shape therapies to address the unique differences from person to person. But I think going forward, we'll really be driving towards a cell-based uh, approach to helping with people with diabetes. And, and that will allow the patients to not really even have to think about diabetes anymore. And research in my lab is interested in using stem cells as an unlimited source for insulin-producing cells that could then be transplanted. We're not there yet. We can see the end. We have to keep pushing uh, until it becomes a reality, but there's still quite a bit of, of work to do. And I'm hoping that when Hennessy is 40 years old, like she says, I cannot wait for the day when I do not have to take insulin because I'm eating, or I don't have to count every single carb that goes into my mouth. I've forgotten what it's like to just eat. Without donors' help, a lot of this collaboration, a lot of this teamwork, and a lot of the equipment we use on the day-to-day -day wouldn't be possible. You can help transform the lives of children living with diabetes and help these children and their families live their best life. It's my hope that with all the, the strides and advancements in medicine, and particularly uh, in the field of diabetes, that even if a cure isn't found, that hopefully that there are some medical advancements that will help Hennessy and kids like her lead a life of normalcy.